in the attic, I guess. Uh, so basically we have a water source heat pump here. That's our outlet and that's our inlet. And then that's the strainer there. So um, it's calling for cool right now, but the compressor's not coming on. Fan is running. Uh, so it's just circulating air. So we got to see what's going on. So first things first, let's see if we're getting the call uh, for cooling first. So we should be getting uh, 24 volts from Y and from O. So that's going to be four and two. So let's see what's going on. So here we go. Okay, so we're checking uh, G to C. So we are getting voltage. And we should be getting reversing valve. Oops. So we're going to go from O to C. Sorry, it's very tight in here. Okay, so O to C. We are getting call. And now Y to C. So we are receiving the call. So it's locked out for some reason. So we'll start with pressures. Uh, I did push in the contactor and everything turned on. So I'm wondering if maybe one of the pressure switches is tripped. So we're gonna go ahead and um, probably hook up some gauges if I can find the pressure taps. Alrighty, so we're gonna go ahead and check our pressure switches. So these are our pressure switches here. So I got it on continuity. If I get a beep, that means it's closed. So that one's good. All right, and that one's good. So none of our pressure switches are open. So that's good. I'll go ahead and put this back on like that. So that's not our issue. So I've reset the unit. Now, according to the schematic, this goes into this. So this is a delay timer. So we're gonna go ahead and trace it. Then when it goes from a delay timer, it goes into this, which is a lockout relay, I think. And then from here, it goes through the pressure switches and then to the contactor. So we're gonna see what's up. So we're gonna bring power back on and see what's going on. Okay, so we cycled it on at the thermostat and now it's working. <sighs> so I'm wondering if something's up with that delay timer. I'm hoping it's gonna quit working. So we're gonna let it run for a little bit. I'm probably gonna hook up some gauges and check the pressures. And then we'll go from there. Okay, so the unit shut off. Uh, so number seven is our lockout signal. So if we're getting 24 volts from there, that means that the lockout relay has engaged, which we are. So something is causing it to lock out. So we need to find out what. Okay, so we're receiving the call from the thermostat. So the anti-recycle delay is delaying the startup. And so yeah, so this lockout relay is connected to number seven. So when we're getting number when we're getting 24 volts from number seven, that means the lockout delay has been engaged. So we got no voltage right now from number seven. So that means it's not engaged. So we're just waiting for the delay timer. And then we should get compressor. And then we got our gauges set up. So we'll see why that's not turning on. I think it's a two or three minute delay. I'm not sure. This one's not adjustable. It's just a preset. I don't see anything that says what it, how long it is. So we'll just wait. All right, there we go. See what our refrigerant pressures are doing. Head pressure is high, so it's going off on high pressure. Yeah, it's going off on high pressure. Because the suction pressure is pretty high too, and we know the filters are clean, because they're like brand new. Coil's not plugged, I already checked all that. I'm gonna go ahead and double check and see. I wonder, we might have to clean out this strainer. There's a strainer in there. So uh, we'll see what's going on. Because if there's a clog here, that means the water's not able to move through properly. So that could be the issue. All right, well, this is the, uh, the cooling tower. So it's operating. Of course, it's locked and I don't have a key, but uh, 
looks like it's operating so yeah so i'm gonna check the strainer so we'll show you what that is but i think it might be a plug strainer okay so we got our clamps on here so they should be within a eight to ten degrees of each other okay so why we're doing this is this is telling us that the water going in is not flowing properly so the water is what carries the heat away from the condenser or the water loop so it absorbs the heat from the air puts it in the water so this is the water going in so our water going in 76 degrees but it's coming out at 93 so it should only be 8 to 10 degrees hotter coming out so that means that it's probably clogged means we don't have enough water coming in for it to do that so there's a screen in there so we're gonna have to go ahead and clean that out and that explains why our head our suction is high because our high side is high so yeah go ahead and cut this off So we're shutting off that one. And there should be another valve over here. And then we need to remove this plug. Purge out any water in the loop. And then we take this off. And then we can get to the screen. We'll wash that off. And then we'll probably just do a quick back flush if I have room to get a bucket in here. So I'm going to get a small little bucket that I can use for this because the uh, five gallons not gonna fit up here so yeah. okay so we're gonna remove the plug first okay. so our plug removed now we need to purge the water out so we're gonna open this valve here slowly oh it's nasty we got brown water coming out of there I don't know if you can see that okay. so now we need to remove this here We want to drain as much of this water as we can out of it. And it's all, it's all mucky. That strainer's probably clogged. Okay, so we got this pulled out. There's supposed to be a screen in there, but there isn't. So somebody probably took it out. The water in there is definitely gross. So we, we're gonna do what's called a back flush, uh, where we're not gonna open up this side, but we're gonna open up the other side so it'll run through and blow out through here. So we're gonna get set up to do that, just to kind of blow out any junk that's in there. And then we'll go into our small bucket and then I have a bigger bucket down here. which we'll dump that into, so let's get set up. All right, here we go. Okay, we're gonna back flush it one last time. Water is getting cleaner. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put our plug 
it back on. up our valve here make sure it's not leaking okay is it good Open up our other one. Alright. But yeah, usually there's a screen in there, so this has probably been a constant problem. So whoever was here last probably took the screen out and left it out so it would last longer. Apparently it can still get clogged. And we're gonna give it a minute and see what happens. But we're about 10 degree differential between water supply and water return. It's a lot better than it was. And our pressure isn't hitting 300. Our suction is much better. We're going to let it run for a little bit. That, that might have fixed it. Alright, so that's our pressures now. So it's doing pretty good. Um, so we got about 79, 89, so that's a little bit high. So these are on the water lines, just so you know, it's not the refrigerant lines. Yeah, so it's a little bit on the high side, but our liquid pressure is staying below. But it is a little, the head pressure is a little high. I might flush it out again, I don't know. But we're going to leave it at that, but that's pretty much if you have a um, water source heat pump and it's going off in high pressure, uh, clean the water lines. It's probably a clog because it transfers, it absorbs the heat from the air inside and transfers it to the water. But if your water is not flowing properly, it's not gonna be able to get rid of that heat. It's gonna increase the pressure of the refrigerant because when you heat it up, it expands. Um, so yeah, that could have been it. So we're gonna watch this a little bit, but we're gonna call it good for as far as this goes. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.